Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte's brutal drug war has taken the lives of more than 7,000 people. After news emerged that a South Korean businessman had been killed by police in October, Duterte apologized and formally suspended the offensive. But the killings have continued anyway. And now the Catholic Church and other faith groups are finally speaking out and trying to fight back. This is what resistance looks like in the age of Duterte's drug war. There are so many drug dependents now in our bodies who are trying hard to really change their life. We saw these people as patients, not as criminal. The message may not seem controversial, but Father Gilbert Belena's sermon is a direct swipe at President Duterte. What they need is cure and love, not condemnation not execution. Father Gilbert is part of a small but growing network of clergy and community organizers who were among the first to actively oppose the killings. So what's your message to those who are carrying out these killings? Human rights groups are documenting of all what had happened and there would be a time of record. They call themselves Rise Up. Their mission is to stand for human rights, give financial aid to victims, and most importantly, to document the killings. They formed just three months ago with about eight people, but as the death toll soared, so did the group's network of supporters. Nadi Sabino helps families take legal action. Agon Kapus offers counseling to victims' families. We wanted to assure them that they are not alone. And they're not just simply facts, figures, that people can just simply kill them, and that's the end of the story. One of the most difficult burdens for the victims' families in this drug war is the cost of burying the dead. Funerals in the Philippines are incredibly expensive. This family needs to raise around 70,000 pesos. That's about $1,500. That's the kind of sum that can put a family in debt for life. So they've set up gaming tables at the wake where people are playing cards or bingo for money. And a percentage of those winnings goes to the family so they can raise the money that they need. These days, funeral wakes are happening constantly across Manila. But few places have seen more than here in Calo Ocan City, where 11 people were killed in a single week. Maria Espinosa is one of the victim's mothers. Her 16-year-old son, Sonny, and six of his friends were all shot dead at a birthday party by suspected vigilantes, a tragedy now known as the Calo Ocan Massacre. Gusto kong bigyan ng katarungan ang pagkamatay ng anak ko. Pero wala na magkasalanan talaga ng anak ko. Ahapuli ko talaga sila. Ngayong nakakatulong-tulong na gaganyan rin lang nila. Kung kaya tanggapin yun. Seven were killed that night. Nanay na yung shot ako at ito po yung kaibigan ko. Sila po yung dalawa yung adamay rin sa mga maril. This young man survived and is currently in hiding. Ryan, not his real name, was shot twice and played dead until the gunman had left. Ryan is a definite target. We interviewed him at a secret location where Rise Up volunteers have been sheltering him. If he was still on the streets, he'd almost certainly be dead by now. Are you scared? No, po. Medyo nga po, natatakot po. Hindi ko nga po alam kung babalik pa po sa bahay po namin. Hindi po talaga maalis sa isip po na nangyari nga po. For months, Rise Up volunteers have been taking huge personal risks to protect people like this. But until now, the church as a whole has remained silent. In recent days, the Catholic Church here voiced official opposition to what it called the reign of terror of Duterte's drug war. What the church says has a great deal of influence. The Philippines is one of the most Catholic countries in the world. 
What's not clear is why it took more than 7,000 deaths for this to happen. We came to one of the largest gatherings of church leaders to find out. Mercy is our mission. Our message is mercy. But while this event was held just days before the church announced condemnation of the killings, it was easy to find priests unsure of their position. Do you condone the killings? No, we don't. We don't. I think the, the, the president, like everybody else, has all the good intentions. Do you think the church is doing enough? Uh, it's doing enough, but not really enough. We can do more. Others here appeared to be in favour of the killings. They agree with the president because there is no other solution. We were surprised because we did not realise that the gravity of the problem. Now yes. Now yes. So the attitudes are changing now? I said, I think so. It's taken more than 6,000 deaths for this to happen. <laughs> Even a single human life is very important. But if you make some scientific uh, proportion, it's small. If you think of Seriously? a scientific, that's, that's well, if you think of a, a scientific a proportion, that? four million six thousand is nothing. Meanwhile, back in Manila, Maria Espinosa and the other families of the Calo Ocan massacre are preparing to bury their children. And while Rise Up have helped them get to this point, their fight for justice has only just begun. Yeah.